We have waited a long time for the official release of Backbreaker through demos, promises, but now the full version is actually here. And here's a video review. Most of Backbreaker looks like an instant replay or a cinema screen. The animation in most parts is eye popping. The collision detection is as good as I've ever seen in any sports game or any genre. The way that the players has felt here and going back to one of the original claims years ago concerning Backbreaker that no two tackles would be the same, but they have definitely delivered on the promise. The stadiums are epic and full of atmosphere. The grass is lifelike, while the crowd is the most detailed I've seen in any football game. The sidelines look a lot like an arena football stadium, but on the field is traditional pro football action. Absent from the visual package are players on the sidelines, coaches and referees. The animation during almost every aspect of the game are the best I've seen, with the exception of the fact that the different position players don't move different enough. By this I mean a running back is not visually different enough than that of a lineman, or etc. The sizes of the players are almost identical. You have to look close to see the difference. It's mostly noticeable through jersey numbers. And as I mentioned in the demo impression, I am not a big fan of the player models or the jerseys. I understand the thinking behind it, but to me it strips the players of any personality, which I think is important, especially without an NFL license. These are all fictional players, so there should have been as much distinction placed on each one as possible, such as guys with long hair, tattoos, big stomachs, some muscular, some just bulky, short guys, tall guys. The player models are almost like crash test dummies, lifelike, uh, in their movements, but sort of without spirit or anything at all. So it might sound a little weird, but it's important to uh, bringing some sort of human element to the game. So even with the amazing animation and stellar lighting, this is something that still pops through as a area of opportunity. Overall, the graphic and animation are stellar, but the area of opportunity still does remain to bring a little bit of more, a little bit more human-like feeling to each player, human-like feeling to the sidelines, and to other aspects of the game that we'll basically go through a little bit later on in here in the video review. But overall, the graphics are going to draw people in, and the animation is going to make you want to play the game. This is the most double-edged sword aspect of the game. In some phases of Backbreaker's gameplay, you make moves instinctively and it feels so natural, and other times you feel lost. Granted, some of this is due to learning curve, but the nature of the game may not lend itself to a fully controllable football team experience. On offense, the running game is solid. Picking holes and cutting back is pretty fluid. Passing takes some getting used to, but its mechanics are very similar to the QB vision Madden unsuccessfully employed a few years back. Now mainly this was scrapped because a large number of gamers felt it was too difficult. This type of gameplay feature generally carries a love or a hate quality. I love it. It makes you feel like a real quarterback. Going through your progressions with a real first person pressure of getting rid of the ball under the rest from rushes and blitzes. It's realistic since no QB can see the whole field at almost any time. He has to move his head and eyes to survey. The analog stick passing creates another learning curve, but it is pretty easily learned. On the negative side, there are far too many turnovers and sacks in the game. Most of this is due to the frantic pace and the camera angle. It is very difficult to see everything that's going on, thus leading to turnovers and sacks. It's so frustrating because much of the game plays so well, but this is one of the aspects of gameplay that is cumbersome and takes away from it a bit in my opinion. On the defensive side of the ball, the camera really can do a job on you. You must call the right defense, but after the snap, it's really important to play the role of the player that you've chosen to control because switching to the player closest to the ball most often will not be effective. The first person camera throws you into the middle of a pileup when you switch and this happens a large percentage of the time. But on the positive side, I've never played any sports game that captured the physical aspect of its sport better than backbreaker. Mad and other games feel like the player with the ball is physically interacting with whomever tries to tackle him but backbreaker feels as though 22 players on the field are all physically interacting, whether they're involved in a play or not, and it's a pretty sight to see when you watch the replays. Now the CPU is dim-witted, and backbreaker does not include sliders, so you must play with what you have, but I believe that backbreaker team may be working on a patch as we speak to solve some of those issues.
On one hand, Backbreaker's presentation is good, with players running from the tunnels, attractive menus and overlays, but most glaringly, the absence of a commentator detracts from the game, stealing a bit of its human or emotional feel, which is such a big part of American football. The rap soundtrack is cool, but probably best suited for the menus and between plays to the PA speaker. The PA announcer helps bring us out of our Android stupor, but it can't hide the overall dullness here. The football sound effects and chatter are excellent, but the presentation looks a lot more like football scenes from any given, any given Sunday than an actual broadcast, which is the approach and the presentation style that I prefer. So a little less glam and glitz and a little more humanity to the presentation would improve this aspect. There are several options to play Backbreaker. I 100% recommend completing the tutorial first in order to properly judge this game. You must complete this and then play a few hours before you will really be able to grasp the differences in this gameplay. There is also Exhibition in League where you can play multiple seasons or created teams or one of the 60 teams that Backbreaker ships with. Now, there are two different types of league play options. There's traditional, and then there's Road to Backbreaker, which is a mode that places your team of choice at a minor league level, and you must defeat teams to escalate to the top tier, full 32 professional league team to become the Backbreaker champion. And it's a cool challenge as you can really see the difference in the teams as you escalate. There is fairly addictive uh, tackle alley mode, which places you as a ball carrier trying to use a series of jukes and spins and other moves to score a touchdown without blockers against multiple defenders. Now, I made it to wave 48 my first go around, and there are a total of about 100 waves to complete the mode with the achievements throughout. Now, the online play is pretty solid. There's almost no lag, but it's a little more glitchy right now than offline. Players do some weird reverse breakdancing animations while on the ground, and I saw some morphing while I was getting my ass beat the first online game against uh, a Rick O'Shea, and I did tell him that I'd shot him out. I scored a touchdown, and they called it a first and goal, but it was like in the back of the end zone. So this, again, is something that is fixable through a patch, uh, but possibly the most intriguing mode is the near Photoshop level team editor and creator. You can add what feels like an innumerable amount of, and an innumerable, <laughs> Say that again. An innumerable amount of layers to your logo. Pick color schemes and equipment specs. What you can't do is name the team a real NFL team name and take it online. Now you can do it offline for, for that play, but you can't do it online. So I created my beloved Chicago Bears only to be a little bit bummed that you can only edit the profile of the team. Basically, you can make it a run first or blitz happy team or a pass happy zone or a zone coverage team. But you uh, can't do anything more in depth than that. Now you can edit player names, jersey numbers, and also those have online restrictions for NFL players past and present, but you can't edit their attributes. So if you were thinking of becoming a backbreaker to create a team artist, know that there are some restrictions to your canvas. So you may have the Bears with Cutler number six, but you may not play like Cutler, exactly like Cutler, so you won't be able to customize it that deep. But it's going to still be pretty cool to see your team colors if you decide to do that on this great animation package and overall visual appeal. Overall, this game is up the ante on animation. It puts pressure on the king of the genre to upgrade, which is the main reason that I think we're seeing locomotion debuting for NCAA and Madden. But Backbreaker does fall short in total experience. But there are too many winning points here for there not to be a sequel, and there are too many winning points for any football gamer to not at least give this a look. It's not a purchase that you do instead of Madden at this point, but I do think it's a nice purchase until August when Madden comes out. And next year, you never know, it may just be that much closer to it. There are some really strong building blocks here. So overall, Backbreakers are 7.25 out of 10. Thanks for watching for www.franchiseplay.net. Peace.